Article 117 clearly indicates the circumstances under which a person cannot be arrested if he's a member of parliament. The ones arguing against the capacity of the police to arrest a certain member of parliament read Article 117 in conjunction with 118. Article 118 basically says a person cannot be served with a court summons, etc., to serve as jury, etc., in relation to courts. If the person, if um, the person is a member of parliament and if the person is attending to parliamentary business. And the constitution goes ahead to say that if there's any doubt as to whether or not a person is attending to parliamentary business, the certificate of the speaker is sufficient proof. Those who read the two together essentially are saying that 1182 addresses exactly the concerns of 117 in the sense that you cannot arrest a certain member of parliament unless you have gone through the speaker. I have indicated that because it is an exception, we have to read it narrowly. You don't read an exception broadly. You read general provisions broadly, and you read exceptions narrowly, because exceptions are narrow. That's what they are. The rule of exceptions is that they carve out a limited provision out of a broader provision. Mm. So you don't read exceptions broadly. So because 117 is an exception, exception to the general rule of arrest, you don't read 117 expansively. But those who read 117 under uh, the same way they read 118 mm. indicates that the two appear to play similar roles, i.e. you are coming to interfere with the MP's functional, uh, functional role in Parliament. And because you're interfering with the MP's... OK. Because you're interfering with the MP's functional role in Parliament, um, you have to ensure that the speaker is brought into the process, i.e. the speaker being, so to speak, the gatekeeper of parliament, must at any point in time account for his members. And so because you are about to interfere with the functional role of, of, the, of an MP through the powers of arrest, it is imperative that you go through the speaker. Indeed, the 1968 constitution reform, uh, constitution, uh, the, the 1968 commission, that drafted the 1969 constitution, mm -hmm. their recommendations actually pointed out to the capacity of an executive to undermine the functions of parliament by artificially reducing the numbers of members of parliament through the power of arrest, especially under critical circumstances. And therefore, they recommended that these powers of the police, in terms of the arrest, the arresting powers of the police must, must, must be exercised you know, pursuant to the speaker, so to speak. You know, not, not, not through the speaker, sorry. Mm -hmm. Must be exercised pursuant to a limited exception, i.e. you can't arrest them when they're on the way from performing the functions for which they're elected. The difficulty with that interpretation is if you look at Article 118, even 118, assuming that we decide to com accept the combined reading of the two, if you look at Article 118, Article 118 specifically speaks of the provision in a back-channel format, i.e., if there's a doubt, so it speaks in a doubt format, that is, the certificate of the speaker is conclusive proof that a person is attending to the business of parliament, i.e. where there's a doubt. So it doesn't speak of it in a frontal manner. In other words, the police, for example, can go into parliament and serve summons on someone uh, to perform particular functions. And if the person says, I'm performing parliamentary business, the person is invoking the immunity. If there's a doubt, the speaker issues a certificate that indicates. Of course, the speaker can issue it proactively if he wants to avoid the whole confusion. But these things are spoken of in a manner which looks quite reactive, particularly 1182, that the speaker can react to any doubt by issuing a certificate, and the certificate of the speaker is conclusive proof. The point I'm just trying to drive at is that the powers of the police to arrest is an expansive power. Mm. It ordinarily cannot be constricted and the circumstances under which it is constricted are clearly itemized. The purpose for the itemization is to ensure that we do not have, if you like, a limitless uh, immunity, so to speak, availing anyone. And whenever anybody claims an immunity, the person must establish it textually in the Constitution. Now, part of the reason why I'm constrained to read 118, and if you ask me, look, my, my preference conflicts with what I read as a reality. My preference actually will have, is for us to have Article 1182 equally repeated under 117. That's my preference. I.e., the speaker must at all points in time be involved in the process. I think it helps because it allows for not only institutional autonomy, but it allows for some checks against the executive. Because we should not forget that all these things happening, the police are part of the executive. 